Chapter 216 The Green Copper Soriragu The once teeming with life, Qingmao Mountain, had turned into a world of ice and snow. Such disruption had certainly attracted attention from nearby forces. Within the past few months, news of the destruction of Mount Qingmao had reached far and wide. I couldn't dare to think back. All there was, was pain. Fang Yuan sat down, his face was full of sadness. Servants, serve more wine. Seeing that Fang Yuan was unwilling to speak, the Bai clan chief did not pursue the matter further. She then ordered her servants to bring two jugs of wine. Bai Ning Bing was indifferent, drinking only water. Fang Yuan immediately broke the seal and gulped a mouthful, then he started to cry again. Junior, why are you crying again? Drinking your clan's wine, smelling its exquisite aroma. I couldn't help but think of our clan's green bamboo wine, of those times we drank on Qingmao Mountain. Fang Yuan was wiping his tears. Among the elders, sobbing sounds got even louder, many tried to console him. In him, they had found a sense of closeness, a connection. After all, the Bai's clan primeval spring was starting to dry out. Failing to find a new one, and the Guyu's clan's sorry state would be theirs. The Bai clan chief tried to console him again, only then did Fang Yuan stop crying. Who would not feel pain when their home is destroyed? I can understand your feelings. But as long as people remain there is hope. Junior, don't be sad. I believe that in just a few days, you and your clansmen will be reunited. Bai Mo Xing probed. Fang Yuan acted as if he was unaware, wiped his tears and answered casually. Yeah, it should be within a few days or so. Hearing this reply, Bai Mo Xing and the Bai clan chief glanced at each other. After dinner, the Bai clan chief called Bai Mo Xing for a secret discussion. Clan chief, this is bad. The Guyu village was destroyed, why did these people come to Bai Gu Mountain? It is obvious that their goal is this land. Should we attack first? Ha ha ha. To his surprise, the Bai clan's chief laughed. Why are you laughing? Elder Mo Xing, calm down. There are pros and cons to this. It can save us a lot of work if we do it right. Bai Mo Xing thought deeply about her words. That's right. After many years of reliable output, the Bai clan's primeval spring was about to run dry. Their clan must find a new spring as soon as possible. Under the guise of hunting, they had teams searching the mountains, trying to locate the primeval spring. Since they had just arrived, the Bai clan's main group did not find anything yet. However, if the Guyu clan survivors had decided to come all the way here, they must have had some intelligence regarding its location. Seeing the expressions on Bai Mo Xing's face changed, the Bai clan chief continued. So you know what I mean. All mountains are nexus of heavens and earth chi, and would have a primeval spring. But to find its specific location will require lots of manpower and resources. Surrounding us are the Fong clan, Liao clan, and Fan clan. All powerful clans, all equal to us in power. If word got out that our Bai clan's primeval spring is drying up, none of them would hesitate to kick us while we are down. So on top of searching for the spring, we also have to carry it out in secret, taking the guise of hosting a hunting trip, further straining our already stretched thin resources. The Bai clan chief paused, carefully choosing her words before proceeding. Bai Mo Xing replied. Chief, you want to get the information straight from the Guyu clan? That's right. The Bai clan's chief's eyes were beaming with light, she nodded. Guyu clan's chieftain and their elders won't be easy to deal with, but with those two in our control? This opportunity must have been blessed by the heavens. Bai Mo Xing frowned. That might prove to be difficult, neither of them are dumb. The girl certainly had an iron will. And the boy, though weak, was completely unfazed by the sight of danger. The first time we met, even though he was surrounded, 
he did not show an ounce of fear. It would not be easy to get information out of those two. The Bai clan chief chuckled. If he did not have such composure, how would he be a young master of a clan? They're both remarkable, though if they were not, I would have been worried about their identities. Please think about it with much consideration. Using force might not get them to submit. The Guyu clan will be here soon, and they all are desperate with nothing left to lose. The Bai clan chief waved her hand. Don't worry, clan elder. I have a plan. Oh? This old one shall listen then. As the Bai clan chief whispered the plan into Bai Moshing's ears, the old man's eye was beaming with devious light. Once she finished, Bai Moshing had nothing but praise. This is a good plan. I saw that Guyu Fong Zhang loves his clan very deeply, even cried for them twice during the feast. After all, he is young. Clan chief, this plan of yours is like placing honey in front of young cubs, placing carrots in front of baby bunnies. There is no way he won't take the bait. Fang Yuan looked out of the tent. It was nighttime already, but the Bai clan's camping ground was very well lit. The tents were set up perfectly into lines, with torches set at intervals, coupled with patrolling groups of Gu masters covering all shifts. Young Master Fang Jing, what is the matter? He had just opened the tent's cover, and immediately two guards came. He burped, all stinking of wine. I drank a lot tonight. Where is the bathroom? Young master, right this way. You are our esteemed guest, so the chief has arranged a special one for you no further than thirty steps away. Give me a direction. I do not like anyone near me when I take a piss. I would never dare to disobey young master. It's that wooden house right over there. The guard pointed at it. Fang Yuan got in, and after he was done, he pretended to be drowsy and walked away from his tent instead. Before he could make twenty steps in, the patrols had walked up to him. Esteemed guest, that is the wrong direction. Your tent is over there. Is that so? I remembered it was there. He burped. Esteemed guest, this way please. The Bai Clan Gu Master cracked out an uncomfortable smile. His tone was forceful. Fang Yuan was escorted back to his tent. There were lights on inside. Bai Ning Bing was sitting on one of the two beds, meditating, using primeval essence to nurture her aperture. Hearing him entering, she gave an inquiring look. Fang Yuan glanced at her, before falling down onto the bed. Ning Bing, sleep early. You have done a lot these few days. Don't worry, just a few more days and we will see our family again. His last few words were slurred together. His eyes were closed, and he was snoring. Bai Ning Bing's pupils shrank. Knowing Fang Yuan was acting, she figured he was telling her to be cautious of surveillance goo bugs. Earlier he went out to the bathroom, only to come back so soon, suggesting the campsite was well patrolled. There was no way they could have made it out without triggering any alarms. The more she thought about it, the more she worried. Though she was at rank 3 peak stage, her goo bugs were not optimal, and there were the Bai clan chief, who was rank 4, about 5-6 elders, and a lot of rank 2s. To be meat on somebody's chopping board was their current situation. The Bai clan might be on the righteous path, but birds died for food, humans died for wealth. If the benefits were to outweigh the risks, they would not hesitate to commit murder. She knew the goo bugs Fang Yuan had were all extremely rare. Especially the heavenly primeval treasured lotus and the blood skull goo, once known, would certainly attract a lot of greed from the Bai clan's goo masters. The only reason they had not attacked was entirely because Fang Yuan used the non-existent Guyu clansmen to pull wool over their eyes for now. The next few days, when they saw that the Guyu clan did not arrive, they would be in serious danger. How do I get out of this? Bai Ning Bing frowned, staring at Fang Yuan. He had already turned around, his back facing her. 
From the sound of his relaxed breathing, he had already fallen asleep. You sure take it easy. By Ning Bing snorted, feeling anxious and helpless. The next day. The sky was clear and the rays were warm. With three beats of drum, the Bai Clan chieftain summoned her clansmen. It is our Bai Clan annual hunting competition. The game begins today and will continue for the next seven days. It is time for you to display your strength. Following common rules, all ranked positions will be rewarded appropriately. Going next, feel free to display all your bravery and skills. The Bai Clan chief waved her hand, and the campsite's gate opened. Eager to start, many Gu Master rushed out impatiently. Within moments, they had all gone into the woods, vanished. The once crowded campsite was now dead quiet. Junior Fang Zheng, did you sleep well last night? The Bai Clan chief turned around, asking Fang Yuan with a smile. He cupped his fist, answered. Thank you, Clan chief, for the hospitality. Last night I fell asleep immediately after lying down, when I woke up it was already morning. Ha ha ha. The Bai Clan chief smiled, patting Fang Yuan's shoulders, looking all endearing. Do you want to enter our clan's hunting competition? Let us see the valor of a Guyu clansman. Fang Yuan, looking all awkward, rejected. I am ashamed. I was badly injured not too long ago, and fell down from my rank 3. Thankfully I was saved by the clan. But now I am only rank 1 middle stage. In honesty, even without him mentioning it, his rank 1 aura was clear to the eyes. No worries, Junior. As our clan's esteemed guest, you will get some privilege. How about this? As long as you hunt an adult black bear, this green copper Sariragu will be your reward. The Bai Clan chief clapped her hand and a goo master solemnly served up a finger-sized spherical goo. Seeing this goo, Fang Yuan was laughing coldly inside, but outwardly, he looked burning with enthusiasm. Then this junior shall take up on your invitation. Chapter 217 Letting People Get a Hold of Your Tail In the forest, a big black bear stood at least two meters tall on its hind legs. It growled at Fan Yuan and Bai Ning Bing, but they did react, infuriating the wild beast. It pounced. Despite its clumsy looks, the bear was indeed very fast, twice the speed of any ordinary human. Seeing the bear approaching within fifty steps from him, Fang Yuan's lips curled up into a satisfactory smile. His goal had been achieved. With a loud bang, soil was sent flying. The black bear cried out in pain, its momentum stopped. Not knowing where the sudden attack came from, it adjusted its path and headed right at Fang Yuan again. But just after ten steps, the ground beneath its feet exploded again. Its chest and belly area was blown to a bloody mess. Its bloodshot eyes were filled with anger. And it struck again. A wild beast is just a wild beast, lacking in wisdom. Fang Yuan sighed as he turned around and retreated. The black bear chased after him relentlessly but there were explosions for every few steps it took. After having made its way through a few more dozen steps, the bear was covered with bleeding wounds. It was limping, not keeping up with its mighty posture. Its anger was gone, replaced by the instinct to survive. Though Fang Yuan was standing no further than twenty steps away, the bear decided to step back. Unfortunately, Fang Yuan had already anticipated its path, and dug a deep hole there, with five thundering potato goo inside. With a loud explosion, the battle ended. At the same time, in the tent, wisps of smoke hovered in the air. In the smoke, images flashed, portraying the process of Fang Yuan's fighting the bear in real time. 
Elder Mo Xing, what do you think? The Bai clan chief spoke. Only Xi and Bai Mo Xing were inside the tent. If I am not mistaken, the Guyu clan young master is using thundering potato goo. This goo is an expendable type. It absorbs energy from the ground to grow and explodes on impact. Among rank 2 goo bugs, they are one of the stronger offensive ones, but they are severely disadvantaged on by goo mountain. There is no soil, even the rocks were made of bones, so thundering potato goo cannot be planted. Bai Mo Xing spoke cautiously, but the Bai clan chief shook her head. Your analysis is not wrong, but that is not what I'm trying to talk about. Did you see that from the beginning, burying the thundering potato goo to the end of the battle was all done by Fang Jing alone? He has a rank 3 bodyguard, but chose to do the tedious way of using rank 2 thundering potato goo by himself. Every time he buries a seed, he has to use primeval stones to recover, yet he insists on doing it himself. What does that say? Bai Mo Xing's eyes sparkled. I understand it now. This Fang Jing is an upright person, not one who likes tricks and shortcuts. He had agreed to join the hunt, so matter how difficult it is, he will not use outside power to cheat. People who cheat are those with weak will. While upright people are immovable. If we want to find out the location of the primeval spring from those two, we must do it with subtlety, using our wits. Ha ha! I have more confidence in my plan now. Luckily, I was able to accomplish the task and did not bring shame to my clan. Fang Yuan placed a torn bear skin in front of the Bai clan chieftain. Ha ha ha, so quick! Yet you took down a black bear. No wonder you are the Guyu clan's young master. The Bai clan chief's face showed just the right amount of shock, which immediately turned into a smile. Junior might as well go back and rest. I will have the green copper sari ragu sent over shortly. Thank you, clan chief. This junior will take his leave. Fang Yuan and Bai Ning Bing left. Not long after, a goo master brought over the green copper sari ragu. Fang Yuan used it immediately on the spot, instantly raising his cultivation to upper stage. Stages were easy to break through as they were only matters of time and effort. A rank, however, needed aptitude as backings. Sari ragu, like stone aperture goo, were goo bugs that could reduce the time and effort required for goo masters to clear through stages. Fang Yuan was still rank 1, the change in stage had yet to have an effect on that at all. That night, as traditions dictated, the Bai clan chief hosted another feast, and both Fang and Bai were invited. There would be a feast for every day of the hunt. Huge bonfire feasts were going on outside, except for a small banquet going on in the main tent, which only the higher-ups were invited to, though as esteemed guests, Fang Yuan and Bai Ning Bing were afforded the privilege to be there. Come, let me introduce you, Junior. Our clan's rising star. You guys should talk with each other more. Bai Mo Xing suggested. There were four young people in the tent, two males and two females. All were rank 3 Gu masters. One of them was Bai Mo Xing's nephew, Bai Mo Ding. He looked skinny, but was ranked 3rd in today's hunt. Of the two girls, one who appeared very unconcerned about her appearance, named Bai Chao Shui, was ranked 4th. The girl next to her was called Bai Lian. She was beautiful, with fair skin and long lush eyelashes, her smile was like a refreshing breeze, long known as the beauty of the Bai clan. Bai Zhang Liev greets the two esteemed guests. The last Gu master took the initiative and took the words right out of Bai Mo Xing's mouth. He had a muscular frame, and his manners were showing pride and battle chi. Looking at Fang and Bai, he first paused on Fang Yuan before giving him a pity smile of disdain, but then his gaze was locked onto Bai Ning Bing. Bai Ning Bing was like a snow fairy with her silver hair and blue eyes, far more striking than Bai Lian. More importantly, she was at rank 3 peak stage, peaking by Jean Lia's interest. He snorted. 
It seems that your Guyu clan has strong women and weak men. Bai Ningbing was like an ice carving, showing no reaction. Fang Yuan's expression turned cold and slightly frightening. The Bai clan chief interrupted. This is the number one youngster in our clan. Junior, please don't blame him for his inconsiderate words. Of course not. Brother Jean Lia is a dragon among men, I am deeply honored. He used a complicated tone, displaying just the right response. A little bit of restraint from being under someone else's roof. A little bit of helplessness from his low rank. And a little bit of pride from his supposed young age. Even Bai Ning Bing was taken by surprise. Bai Zhan Lia snorted, which Fan Yuan could not help but laugh coldly inside. He knew the Bai Clan situation, but the Bai Clan did not know his true trump cards. The situation might seem dire for him, but he had a strong grasp on the advantage he had, information. Making good use of my advantage is the key to getting out of this predicament. The green copper Sariragu is a good sign, showing the Bai clan is indeed worried about the non-existent Guyu clan's main team. They did not want to use force, but tricks and manipulations instead. Could this Bai Jean Lia be their next chess piece? Now thinking about it, his tone was a bit forced. If he really is the Bai clan's next move, then things will be a little bit more complicated. I might as well give them my weakness. If Fang Yuan were to allow the Bai clan to set up traps on their terms, he would fall further and further into a passive position. Therefore, he might as well give others a tail to get a hold of him, throwing out some fake weaknesses to gain the initiative. Thinking of this, Fang Yuan swept the entire tent, and came up with an idea. He peeked at Bai Lian across the table. After a while, Bai Lian seemed to have noticed his gaze, but Fang Yuan then turned his head away, looking elsewhere. As the dinner went on, Fang Yuan took several more looks at Bai Lian, but avoided making eye contact with her. The feast was in its later half, and Fang Yuan was staring at Bai Lian more often. The Bai clan chief, together with several elders, all noticed. The elders were showing amusement in their eyes. To be charmed was human nature, and Bai Lian was the number one beauty of the Bai clan. It was only normal that the Guyu young master was attracted to her. After the feast was over, Bai Mo Xing excitedly went to see the clan chief. Clan chief, did you see what happened during dinner? The Bai clan chief smiled. Let's adjust the plan. The night passed without any hiccups. During the second day of the hunt, the Bai clan chief called Fang Yuan again, telling him to hunt an earthhorn rhino. Using the same method, Fang Yuan blasted the rhino with thundering potato goo, then brought back its horn, which the Bai clan chief then rewarded him with a de-inflammation goo. Looking like a fossilized beetle, the jade-like translucent goo bug gave off a cooling chi when held in hand. This goo was a rank 2 healing goo, specialized in treating poisons. With this goo, Fang Yuan finally solved his biggest weakness. Another dinner feast went on. This is my son and daughter. Bai Shane, Bai Hua, stand up and give this older brother a toast. The Bai clan chief said. The twins stood up, raising their cups with both hands like adults, speaking in unison. Bai, Bai Xing toasts toast Gu Yang young master. master. They bowed slightly, with solemn expression, fully displaying their good upbringing. There was no sign of childish stubbornness. Fang Yuan was shocked, immediately sizing up this pair of twins. According to his previous life, these two kids would become the famous twin stars of Righteous Path who were extremely well known for a time. They both reached rank 5 and developed the Bai clan village to an unprecedented height. At the same time, they were the inheritors of the Bai Gu Mountain legacy. Bai Xing eventually became clan chief. It was common for a clan to pass on their chieftainship to the clan's chief's children. Though in the Guyu clan's case, the clan chief did not have any children, so an outstanding youngster with high aptitude from their purest bloodline descendants was chosen, Fang Zhen. All humans underwent a growing process. Bai Sheng and Bai Hua might be great heroes in the future, 
but now they were only children, not even Gu Masters yet. Fang Yuan retracted his gaze and focused on Bai Lian again. The feast continued. Fang Yuan continued to sneak peeks at Bai Lian, which Bai Zhan Liu was aware of, and his words became even more unforgiving. Bai Mo Xing's nephew Bai Mo Ding, on the other hand, was sneaking peeks at Bai Ning Bing.